हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक टू गुरुकुलम ऑनलाइन लर्निंग क्लासेस दिस वीडियो इज फॉर क्लास टेंथ टुडे वी गन स्टार्ट द सेकेंड लेसन ऑफ इंग्लिश द हैप्पी प्रिंस दिस लेसन इज रिटन बाय ऑस्कर वाइल्ड ही इज इन आयरलैंड ऑथर He is a very famous very renowned he has written number of small stories very comedy plays poems he is a very very famous author his creation the happy prince is one of the best it's a very short story which plights the condition of the society it how selfishness takes over the good deeds how selfishness takes over selflessness this story is the perfect portrait of it in this story he describes the pathetic plight of the poor and the selfish of the rich the story teaches people to have love and compassion for the poor and needy it also highlights that good actions charity and compassion bring enduring peace and happiness as i've told you in this story we will read what is the condition of poor people in a society how rich sometimes overtake and force poor people the story also teaches us that how selflessness how good deeds results in peace and happiness so let's move forward and start it start reading this lesson high above the city on a tall column stood the statue of the happy prince he was gilded all over with thin leaves of fine gold for eyes he had two bright sapphires and a large red ruby glowed on his sword hilt the story the setting takes place in a small european village where there is this statue in the square of a happy prince there is a statue of a prince on the square and how is this statue it is gilded it is made of gold it is gilded with leaves of fine gold and for two bright eyes in the place of eyes he had sapphires a very precious gemstone and a large red ruby ruby is another very precious gemstone and ruby glowed on his sword hilt sword hilt hilt means handle he had a sword and on the handle there was a red ruby he was very much admired indeed he is as beautiful as weather clock he marked one of the town councillors who visited to gain a reputation for artistic taste only not quite so useful he added fearing lest people should not think him impractical which he really was not the statue was so beautiful it was admired and often compared with precious things but people seldom think that the statue is useless why people think it was useless because the statue was very precious it was made of gold it was made of sapphires ruby gemstones precious gemstones but still it wasn't for anybody's help it was just to show 
Why can't you be like the happy prince? Asked a sensible mother of a little boy who was crying for the moon. The happy prince never dreams of crying for anything. There is another portrait of poor family. There was a mother, there was a son. The son was crying for the moon. He wanted the moon. And the mother tells him, why can't you be like happy prince? He was always happy, never cried for anything in his life. Why can't you be like him? I am glad there is someone in the world who is quite happy, muttered a disappointed man as he gazed at the wonderful statue. There was this another person, he was disappointed, he was sad, he was sorrowful for his life. He gazed at this statue of the happy prince and the statue was magnificent. And he, with sigh, said that, wow, at least someone in this world is happy. He looks just like an angel, said the charity children, as they came out of the cathedral in their bright scarlet cloaks and their clean white pinafores. Cathedral, cathedral, it's a church building. The charity children, the children, they come out wearing their cloaks and pinafores. Pinafores is a, a cloth we have on above of the clothes. So these people, they, these children, they came out from the building and they saw the statue and they compared, they said it looks like an angel. They themselves were admiring the statue. Ah, but we have in our dreams. Sorry, how do you know? Said the mathematical master. You have never seen one. Ah, but we have in our dreams. Answered the children. And the mathematical master frowned and looked very severe. For he did not approve of children dreaming. The students, they came out, the children, they came out, they saw the beautiful statue and they compared it with an angel. The mathematical master, he asked, have you ever seen an angel? Children says, yes. They said, yes, we have in our dreams. And the master, he frowned as severe as he do not approve of children dreaming. He is not happy that the children are dreaming. This is another portrait of a society, of a place, a relationship between students and children, students and teacher. Their teacher wants the children to learn only that what he is teaching but not the imagination of them one night there flew over the city a little swallow his friends had gone away to Egypt six weeks before but he had stayed behind for he was in love with the most beautiful reed he had met her early in the spring as he was flying down the river after a big yellow moth and had been so attracted by her slender waist that he had stopped to talk to her. It's a story of another time. Sometime later, a swallow, swallow is a little type of bird which is very swift, which is very fast. He was flying alone because his friends, whose friends? Swallow's friends. They went to Egypt. These birds, they migrate to warmer places. And Europe is a country with 
severe and harsh winters the birds cannot some birds cannot survive in such environment so his friends they flown to the warmer places called egypt they fled to egypt but the bird he stayed behind because he fell in love with another kind of bird which was the bird reed swallow was flying one day after an insect and he saw this bird was there reed and he saw his slender thin waist and he fell in love with this small bird shall i love you said the swallow who liked to come to the point at once and the reed made him a low bow so he fled round and round her touching the water with his wings and making silver ripples this was his courtship and it lasted all through the summer the swallow took the permission of reed he asked that shall i love you and in reply reed agreed to it and the whole summer they enjoyed and had a good time together ripple ripple means waves it is a ridiculous attachment twittered the other swallows she has no money and far too many relations and indeed the river was quite full of reeds then when the autumn came they all flew away the other swallows they did not think good of the little one they say his love is pointless there are number of other reeds in the river and reeds are do not they do not have good reputation they flirt with everyone hence they all flew away when the autumn came after they had gone he felt lonely and began to tire of his lady love she has no conservation he said and i'm afraid that she is conquit for she is always flirting with the wind and certainly whenever the wind blew the reed made the most grateful courtesy i admit that she is domestic he confirmed but i love traveling and my wife consequently should love traveling also all of the friends of swallow they left and the little swallow he left behind lonely he knew that his love reed he is domestic he loves the uh, she loves the reed loves to stay where she is besides the river she does not want to go any place else but swallow asked her he told her that i know that you are domestic but my wife my love should love traveling because i love traveling and as i love traveling visiting places you should also the swallow said to read will you come away with me he said finally to her but the reed shook her head she was so attached to her home you have been traveling with me he cried i am off to the pyramids goodbye and he flew away swallow finally asked the reed will you come away with me will you come with me will you fly away with me and the reed shook his her head he said she said no and the angry swallow said he was sorrowful that her love was trifling with him and he flew away to the pyramids 
pyramids means egypt all day long he flew and the night time he arrived at the city where shall i put up he said i hope the town has made preparations then he saw the statue of on the court kotal column i will put up there he cried it is a fine position with plenty of fresh air so he lighted just between the feet of the happy prince so the bird swallow he fly and fly all day long he just got tired and he decided that he should rest for the night and he saw he came to this european village we have this statue of happy prince and the bird decided that i should rest at the feet of the statue of happy prince i have a golden bedroom he said softly to himself as he looked around and he prepared to go to sleep but just as he was putting him head under his wing a large drop of water fell on him what a curious thing he cried there is not a single cloud in the sky the stars are quite clear and bright and yet it is raining the climate in the north of europe is really dreadful the reed used to like the rain but that was merely her selfishness so the swallow he was resting in his golden bedroom at the feet of the statue of the golden prince suddenly a drop of water drenches him he looks at the sky wondering the sky is clear and how come it's raining he wonders he tells like really the weather of the north of the europe is dreadful it is unpleasant it is very bad how come this is happening and then another drop fell what is the use of a statue if it cannot keep the rain off he said i must look for a good chimney pot and he determined to fly away but before he had opened his wings a drop fell and he looked up and saw what did he see he, there were number of droplets falling on him drenching him wet and he thought it was useless to spend a night under the statue which could not protect him from rain and he decides to fly away and find another home for the night but before he could fly away he sees what he see the eyes of the happy prince were filled with tears and tears were running down his golden cheeks his face was so beautiful in the moonlight that the little swallow was filled with pity who are you he said i am the happy prince why are you weeping then asked the swallow you have quite drenched me so what he saw what swallow saw that the happy prince was crying there was tears in the eyes of the statue the happy prince the swallow asked who are you why are you crying you have drenched me wet he said i am the happy prince when i was alive and had a human heart answered the statue i did not know what tears were for i lived in the palace of san sosi where sorrow is not allowed to enter in the daytime i played with any my companions in the garden and in the evening i led the dance in the great hall round the garden ran a very lofty wall but i never cared to ask what lay beyond it everything about me was so beautiful my courtiers called me the happy prince and happy indeed i was if pleasures be happiness so i lived and so i died and now that i am dead they have set me up here so high that i can see all the ugliness and all the misery of my city and though my heart is made of lead yet i cannot choose but weep the happy prince he shared his story with the bird 
He said, when I was young, when I was alive, I used to live in this palace without any worries. I used to play around, have fun. I did not know what the tears were. I lived my life and died in the same way. But when I died, they put me over here. So at the so high platform that I can see the whole town. And what I see, the misery, the poverty, the problems of the people. And now, even that I have a heart of lead, a metal, I cannot be happy anymore. And that's why I am crying. What is he not solid gold? And said the swallow to himself. He was too polite to make any personal remarks out loud. Far away continued the statue in a low musical voice. Far away in a little street there is a poor house. One of the window is open and thought through it I can see a woman seated at a table. Her face is thin and worn and she has coarse red hands. Coarse, rough. Coarse means rough. Worn means tired and exhausted. Red hands all pricked by the needles for she is a seam stress. A lady seam stress means a lady who does sewing. She is embroidering passion flowers on a satin gown for the loveliest of the queen's maid of honor to wear at the next court ball. In a bed in the corner of the room, a little boy is lying ill. He has a fever and is asking for oranges. His mother has nothing to give him but river water. So he is crying. Swallow, swallow, little swallow. Will you not bring her the ruby out of my sword hilt? My feet are fastened to this pedestal and I cannot move. The happy prince, he continues the story. He tells him that far away from here, there is this small house, there is this small window. And through that window you can look, there is a, this old lady, tired, with rough hands with her hands pinned by the needles. She is sewing a gown, a satin gown. And her son, he's lying ill on the bed and he's crying for the food. But the poor lady, she does do not have any sort of food except river water. And the prince asks the bird, like, please take the ruby from the handle of my sword and give this ruby to that poor lady. I myself cannot do it because my legs are fastened, they are tied to the pedestal, the base. And please do this for me. I am waited for in Egypt, said the swallow, my friend, are flying up and down the Nile and taking to the large lotus flowers. Soon they will go to sleep in the tomb of the great king. The king is there himself in his painted coffin. He is wrapped in yellow linen and embellished with spices. Round his neck is a chain of pale green jade and his hands are like withered leaves. The swallow, he makes excuses. I cannot help you. I have to go to Egypt with my friends. My friends are enjoying. They are having nice time over there. They will live with the king, the mummy king. I have to go. I cannot help you. Swallow, swallow, little swallow, said the prince. Will you not stay with me for one night and be my messenger? The boy is so thirsty and the mother so sad. I don't think I like boys, answered the swallow. Last summer when I was staying on the river, there were two rude boys, the miller's sons, who were always throwing stones at me. They never hit, hit me, of course. We swallows fly far too well for that. And besides, I come of a family famous for its agility. But still, 
it was a mark of disrespect the happy prince asked again the swallow to help the poor and the needy family the swallow says i am not very fond of the boys they try to hit me with rocks though i am fast and quick enough to get hit but still it is disrespectful so i am not very fond of helping boys but the happy prince looked so sad that the little swallow was sorry it is very cold here he said but i will stay with you for one night and be your messenger thank you little swallow said the prince so the swallow picked out the great ruby from the prince's sword and flew away with it in his beak over the roofs of the town the swallow said but it is cold over here it is it is a very cold night but i will definitely help you for a night for a night i will be your messenger and he took the ruby and he flew away towards this poor family he passed by the cathedral tower where the white marble angels were sculpted he passed by the palace and heard the sound of dancing a beautiful girl came out of the balcony where with her lover how wonderful the stars are he said to her and how wonderful is the power of love i hope my dress will be ready in time for the state ball she answered i have ordered passion flowers to be embroidered on it but the seamstress or slazies he passed over the river and saw the lanterns hanging to the mast of the ships he passed over the ghetto and saw the old jews bargaining with each other and weighing out money in copper scales at last he came to the poor house and looked in the boy was tossing feverishly on his bed and the mother had fallen asleep she was so tired in he hopped and laid the great ruby on the table beside the woman thimble then he flew gently round the bed fanning the boy's forehead with the, his wings how cool i feel said the boy i must be getting better and he sank into the delicious slumber while the swallow he flew over the city the town he saw a number of things which shows which portrays the condition of the society he flew over an educational building a beautiful building with marbles and angels sculptured then he came to a ball room where the people were dancing they were happy they were in love they were dan- uh, they were happy with each other and still criticizing poor people he saw a dock where these people were bargaining things from each other and they still were very rich and then the swallow it comes to the house of that poor family where the boy was starving he had a fever and he was tossing in his bed he finally kept the ruby on the table besides the woman he fanned he gave some air he fanned the boy's forehead and somehow it gave boy some relief and he slept then the swallow flew back to the happy prince and told him what he had done it is curious he remarked but i feel quite warm now although it is cold the swallow he went back to the happy prince and he told everything whatever he saw the prince was curious but a little warm in that cold night so i hope you understood the story till now in the story we have read about this prince who was very happy at first when he was alive when he did not know anything about the misery and the poverty of the society the condition of the poor and when he died when his statue gilded statue with gem stones was put up on the square and when he can when he can see the condition of the society he felt miserably 
and this swall bird came to him he asked for the help and the bird took one of the gemstone from the sword hilt of the statue and give it away to this poor family we will continue this story in our next part i would ask you to read this story once again if you have any problems regarding any difficult words underline them search it in the dictionary till then goodbye be safe be at home